everybody, how's it going? Octopus here, and welcome back to Union Cross. So I'm feeling a little bit better. I actually slept the whole day. I didn't do anything except for change my setup a little bit. I moved my computer around, and now I have a different background. If you see how dark it is. So I don't know if the video quality is as good because I had to reset OBS for some reason while I was unplugging all the USBs. Something went wrong, but hopefully it still looks okay. I can't really tell if I put too much color in the video. Not the actual game itself, but my webcam. So let me know if it does look a little off. But in this video, we're going to actually try to get ourselves into the top 5,000. So the last one I posted for the Hercules and Phil was basically not enough. I knew it wasn't going to be enough because it was 0%, but I'm going to do another run here and try to make my free-to-play go into the top 5,000 because last time I did miss Minnie and Mickey by like... I think 100 places or something. It was, I left it for last minute and that was a terrible idea. So I'm not going to leave it for the last minute now. I'm actually going to post a video, make a setup with you guys, and actually teach you some things along the way to help you. So currently I'm in rank 14,489 and that's just not going to do it. Also, I want to make at least 15 million. I don't know if it's going to be possible to make 22.5 without any pulls. Uh, I haven't pulled. I don't have any of the world end with you medals. I don't have anything to be exact. I just have the orchestra and a 21% friend medal. Later on, I might pull, but again, if I can make top 1,000 without, like, yeah, what are the chances gain any of the 0.2 medals or key art eight? So I don't have much choices here, guys. So I am gonna go in with what I have and try to get the best possible. So what I'm gonna do is build a keyblade setup with you guys. In equipment. The first thing you guys want to do is find your strongest Keyblade, which is either Olympia, uh, Divine Rose, whatever you guys have with the biggest multiplier, and try to look for a metal like that. Like on the Olympia, it's a 2.7. Over here, there's a 2.8. Other Keyblades have high multipliers, reverse speed. Mine aren't fully maxed out because this is my free-to-play account. I'm still working on a lot of stuff, so a lot of my stuff is very, very weak. But I did focus on one Keyblade first, and then I'm going to spread my wings and try to go for other Keyblades as I need them. But I know Divine Rose and Olympia are solid choices because the 2.7 and the 2.8 on here. It's a 3.0 if you actually level up the Divine Rose to plus 30. But this is what I go through when I do high score challenges or events. I try to build it a certain way. And I'll start off uh, from scratch. I'll pull off all my medals and then go into what I need. Obviously, I know on this account I'm going to use Zaldin B. But I kind of want to start this video off just by showing you how to build a Keyblade setup for these high score challenges. Now the first thing you guys want to do is highlight special attack because that's going to show you each medal how much percentage if they're guilted. That's if you guys already have a guilted medal. If you don't have a guilted medal, making top 5000 the high score challenge is going to be near impossible. So you do need a certain guilted medal to do it to actually make top 5000, not just a whole bunch of percentage medals. So what you guys are going to do here is the most important thing is look for your buffer so do you guys have a buffer these are all buff medals if you guys didn't see what I clicked on I clicked on the sword with the up there that means all strength buffers general general strength which is gonna give you the most score is gonna be in this section here and for me I have Kyrie I have Sebastian I have uh, what do you call it Ariel flounder I have a bunch of uh, times three buffers but there's other options guys you guys can combine Poo together, winning the poo, get extra attack, that's gonna give you times four. If not, times two is enough. If you have two of this or a piglet or anything else that does times two, put them together, that's at least times four strength. That's if you don't have a bunch of percentage medals to put onto your Keyblade setup. So for me, I'm gonna put a Kyrie here with second chance, cause that's my staple medal for this account. And then I'm gonna add another times three, because I want at least 10, 10 not 10, uh, six times strength buff for general. So now that I have that out of the way, I got to go find my percentage medal. Now my percentage medal is the one we got for free. Uh, every high score challenge is going to be different. During this one, I know exactly which one it is because we looked through the list already. So we're going to go for the orchestra medal here. The orchestra uh, Sora. So everyone got this for free. This is a free 7%, which is really nice. I haven't locked it yet. I'm just going to keep it there at minimum level and I'm going to put it on the opposite Keyblade slot because I don't want any of my buffers or my percentage medals to actually do any damage. The less damage they do, the better. So they actually don't kill an enemy by accident. Or if you have a medal that does multiple hits, I'll get to that in a second, they won't take away HP from that medal doing more damage, which equals more score. So 
Got my percentage medal, got my two buffers. Now, because I know I'm not going to be one turning stuff, I need a defense medal. But before even any of this, guys, you should be choosing your strong hitting medal. And the way to do that is the one you want to check for first is one hit. So you go through your list of one hit medals, um, and the thing you guys want to look for is its multiplier. Over here, Cerberus has 2.19, but it's only 5 star. It's bigger than that. So you guys want to sort by what you have guilted. And if it's guilted, it's going to be a 6 star. So just make it cleaner. If you know that you already combined everything together and you guilted all your metals, then just do this because it's a lot cleaner. It gets rid of all those 1, 2, 3, 4 stars. So this is my list. And what you guys want to look for is a metal that is one hit and has the most multiplier and try to get it at its max guilt, 100%, because that's gonna give you the best score possible. Like my Hercules and Phil run I showed you guys, 3.36 at 100%, that's gonna be a 7.72 multiplier, which is huge. I totally did that wrong, a 6.72, sorry about that. So a 6.72 is pretty big, and with enough percentage medals, I can make the top 5,000, but I didn't pull any medals, so I wanna go bigger than that. So you wanna keep going through your list, and look for the metal with the highest multiplier right here guys this is what you guys want to be looking for and obviously there's a lot of choices like if you do have these tier threes guilted they get pretty high but so does hercules and phil if you guys don't have hercules and phil just keep going through your list until you find something like vex in here after multiple turns and it's not hard to survive multiple turns with him but for the lower enemies you're going to kill a lot of stuff this only works on the big ones he does have a decent multiplier but he's not the best choice so just keep going through your list until you guys find whatever your multiplier is. Here, Zelda B has a 4.71. And that's the highest currently for free-to-play players. Or there's other medals, but you got to be very, very lucky. And if you don't have the luck, then you don't have anything else. Now, the only reason I'm saying that is because a lot of people played the game after Zelda B. So there's medals like... Where is it? Marluxia A, guys. If you don't know who Marluxia A, I'm about to show you. This is another really good medal. If you can get Marluxia A guilted, he hits like a 3.9 multiplier, fully guilted. I think it's 3.9, but it's really high. And he's a single target, and he does one hit. Very good high score challenge medal. Um, I don't think I have one, but Master Xehanort, I believe... I don't have one, but he also does a single hit. There's a lot of medals that do a single hit. Just check your medal list and see what's guilted. So for me, obviously, like I said before, my Zaldan B and my Hercules and Phil are my biggest single hit hitters. So I am going to grab them, or grab Zaldan B in this case, and put them on my highest Keyblade slot, which is a 2.8 over here, if you guys can see. Again, if I level up my Divine Rose to level 30, that would be 3.0, and I would have way more score than I'm about to get right now. But I don't have any Magic Gems. So, now we got this out of the way, I know the high score challenge has multiple attributes, there's power, speed, and magic, and Zaldin B here is only really good against magic, so if you see the little chart down here, power, speed, and magic, you guys want to go with the opposite attribute that does the most damage to get the best score. Doesn't mean that when he hits a power enemy, you're not going to get a good score, it's still going to give you a score, just not as good as something that's super effective to that. So. My Zaldan B, this is going to be my setup, 2 times 3 because that's going to give me the best strength possible. And the thing you guys want to do with your main damage metal is you put that chips, you put the Dales there for survivability, obviously. You make sure it's at max guilt, and then you put attack boost 3 max on it. Or if this later on in the future, attack boost 4 max or 5 max or whatever they come up with. So we got that out of the way, and what I'm going to use here is actually use Vexen. Uh, if you guys don't know, I'm going to use a buff metal to buff my defense to make sure I survive. I could probably add more here, like a metal with paralysis or a metal with uh, poison or something to help me. But I just want to do survivability because I know my Zaldan B is not going to be tough enough to take all stuff. So this is a safe choice here because it has extra attack. Something to buff my defense, at least against speed and magic enemies. I'm going to have a tr pro uh, problems with power enemies. But that's what second chance for is on, on my Kairi. My Kairi has second chance, so if an enemy one hits me, I have another chance to take it out. And then plus, there's the defense boost 2 on here, and hopefully all three trigger, I'll also survive off that. So now that I have all that going, my sword over here also raises the defense of all attributes, so I'll have times 3 defense through the whole thing. This is not going to apply to every high score challenge, but this is just me building my Keyblade setup. I have my 2 times 3 
I got my defense and then I got my heavy hitter and plus my percentage medal. Uh, if you guys don't have in the current moment, if you don't have the Attack Boost 3 Max, these two boards here are really, really good. I'm going to buy them. I just haven't bought them yet because I want to see what's going to happen in 9 days. I always buy stuff at the last minute unless I have to use it. If you guys don't have an Attack Boost 3 Max, there's an Attack Boost 3 Max SP Gauge 1 in here. So, now that we have our Keyblade set up, let's go to the quest and let's just double check everything to make sure we're not missing any percentage medals because the more percent you put into your Keyblade, the more score you're going to get. And the way to find out how much percentage you have right here, guys, I have 7% because, again, the Orchestra Sora is part of the medal list, which you guys see right here. So, 7%. Now, what you guys want to find is a friend medal that has 21%. Now, I don't want to use this sword, uh, this Kingdom Hearts Cloud here because for the weaker enemy, he's actually going to do some damage to them, and that's really bad. And also, he doesn't do any damage to the later on enemies. Not enough anyways. So what I'm going to do here is look for another Cloud EX that's not guilted, that does not have any attack boost, but actually has a sleep, a paralysis, uh, even defense boost. Anything that your parties can help you out with would be really good. If he could throw in some defense there, some Dales for us, that'd be great, Tarin. But yeah, you guys want to find a 21% medal for that high score challenge. In this case, it's Cloud EX, which is nearly impossible to get. So if you're lucky enough to see one, uh, jump into the level and just try it over and over and over again. But do not come out of it because you might lose it if it's not part of your party. Just reset your app and go back in. Alright, so we're going to change one thing here. Instead of using Vex and B and going very, very safe, I'm actually going to take that out. And what I'm going to do is add an Illustrated Kari 2, which is the banner out right now. So if you don't have one, I really, really highly recommend getting one. So she's going to restore our SP. And the reason that's so important is that I always want to be able to activate these two medals right here plus this medal. Every enemy. This is just to survive. On Later on, I want to make sure I'm times 3 buffing and activating his ability. If I don't have enough SP, I'm not going to be able to do this. So Kyrie is actually more important here. I'm going to make sure I have Defense Boost 2 on her. Since my other Kyrie has second chance. It can be vice versa. It doesn't matter as long as you guys have that survivability. Later on this will change. It's not an ideal skills for these medals. But for now this works out just fine. So take away that Vixen. Um, because we need the SP restore. If my Zaldin had Attack Boost 3 Max and SP Gauge 1. I would second think that and just not use her and use the survivability. But we're going to go with that. So we have this going on. And again, later on, I'm going to not, not able to activate certain these certain metals. So what I'm actually going to do here is switch around a couple of these. Now, this one has a lot of chips on it and this one doesn't. So what I'm going to do here is actually put Ariel over here and then keep my Kyrie here. So either way, this is really bad because it does a little bit of damage. All these medals are on the proper, uh, proper attributes and you don't want that. You actually want all these medals to do as least amount of damage as possible. So I'm trying to make them as weak as possible. Put blue on green, red on blue, stuff like that guys. Make sure they're not on the same color keyblade except for him or your main damage dealer medal. He should be on the best keyblade setup as possible. So we got that going. Let's go into the high score challenge and run this. So I'm going in with 28%. This is my setup, and let's see how we do. I'm going to show you my full pilot on this. Again, a lot of you don't have Zaldin B, but you can switch around your medals, Hercules and Phil, whatever you guys want to do. Just make sure that you have a medal that does one, two, or three hits. One hit is the best. That medal will take care of you like nothing else. So, when it comes to these beginning guys on the first bridge, I know I can one-turn them, so I'm not going to activate any of my defense medals in this crate in this case it's only orchestra sora i wasn't thinking when i was talking about the keyblade setup before so i'm just gonna go for pure buffs here and skip that so I actually save some sp because i don't need to activate that so this is what you're gonna do through the whole thing you want to make sure that every single buff is being activated to the point where you're not killing the enemy because it's going to really matter when you come back to the other enemies but i'm just gonna go through this and you guys can sit there and just copy it if you want uh, the, the Kyrie 2 there is really important just because of that SP. The SP issue I'm going to have through this whole thing would not be possible without her. So if you guys don't have one, the Mercy Pull is happening right now. I would say pull for her. But if you really want to, wait till the last minute to see what they announce that they're releasing. If it doesn't look good, then go for it. I say go for it either way because it's a really, really good metal. 
So here where we got multiple enemies, you guys want to just make sure that when it comes to the weaker ones, that the other one stays alive. So once you take out one, just make sure you're swiping and doing minimal damage. The less, the best. The less, the best. Um, so here, we got paralyzed. We missed the first one. That's totally fine. We want to make sure all our buffs go in. If they don't, just keep swiping and try another turn. I might die here because of that. But hopefully a second chance procs. If it does, we're good. The whole thing here is that you guys want to make sure all your buffs go off. If they don't, you got to keep swiping and keep surviving. So I got to activate at least one of the Kyrie, so I will survive a hit and defense boost goes off. Just keep doing this. If you're having a problem with paralysis, you got to keep doing this. You got to make sure all the buffs go off. If they don't go off, then you don't finish this. You got to keep make sure that you get everything in there. So I missed it again. I got another turn. After this, I'm pretty sure he's going to start dying and I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm going to heal one more time. I got to swipe all this. Hopefully he doesn't. Okay, this is where he doesn't paralyze you. So, but he does have that time stream general up. It's not that bad. It's totally fine. Because you are going to be able to get through it. Even if it lowers your score just a little bit, at least try this attempt once and then go back in there and see if you have better luck with uh, paralysis than I did. Because you want to be able to do that before the paralysis procs and that defense bus buff shows up. If that defense bus sh buff shows up, tongue twist for some reason, if it shows up, then you probably want to reset it. It does adjust the score slightly, but not as much as everything else. Now, these attribute buffs are a huge problem. So what we're going to do here is swipe. Um, again, if you have a single target metal, you don't have to worry about distributing damage properly. You just want to be able to survive this. Hopefully, second chance happens. It does. Good RNG. Good RNG. But now that we survived that one turn, all their buffs are gone. And now this is where we want to start taking them out. So now we're going to apply full buffs. And we're going to kill them on the second and third turn. Because they no longer have their two buffs up. And that's really, really important for your score. The more damage, the better. So that's one down. The second one shouldn't be able to one-shot you. You should be able to survive it, especially with defense boost. You're A-OK. -okay. So again, full buffs. Nothing too special here. It's just certain enemies, you got to take them in a certain order. You can't just one turn them on the first turn. You want to make sure that they have the lowest buffs possible. If you have medals like KR9 that carry over buffs, then you want to be able sure to make sure you have negative seven. So kill the enemy on the second turn to apply your double turn buffs. So again, this whole first room here, we don't have to worry about activating defense medals, which is that Sora. We just want to go full out attack. In the next room is where the strategy kind of changes. So first room clear and we are at 7.57, which I believe my main account was at 9 million when I left this room. So we're not too far off, which is pretty good. So we are going to get a nice score with this setup. So now I want to activate my metal here. And the reason I want to do that is because I want to get rid of his buffs there. He does have a speed up buff, if you can see that. So, actually, I don't know why I'm buffing here. I don't need to buff here. I just have to activate Kyrie 2 because she's going to take away buff. This is risky, though. Um, you guys can't see it, but one defense boost 2 went off. I'm actually going to lower this so you can see some of my skills go off. One defense boost 2 went off. If it didn't, I had to rely on second chance. But the whole point is that you guys want to get rid of that buff there and I believe yeah uh, the sword in the first slot his buff carries over two turns so this turn shouldn't be as scary uh, again I'm not going to activate here I just want to get rid of that buff so now he's at a zero speed buff he no longer has that speed buff but he does have a times three strength buff so hopefully we survive that oh the sleep went off perfect so now that we got that happening we can take this guy out now we're gonna go full buffs because he no longer has his defense for speed so we're going to use full buffs here and take them out now. You want to get rid of that speed buff to be able to do the best score possible. So that does one turn him. I was like, oh, am I going to one turn him or not? But yeah, it does. That was perfect. Now we got to deal with this guy here. Again, he's got that times two speed buff. But the problem with him is that we have to kill him as soon as possible. We can go RNG and go three turns. But I don't know if we're going to be able to survive three turns. Now... I can't one turn him, so that's a good thing. So you have to activate your, your attack on the first turn. Hopefully sleep goes off. Sleep went off, but it didn't stick. And we need second chance here. So for the rest of this, this level, you need second chance all the way to the end. 
But that's what you're going to do all the way down to the end. And by doing that, you guys are actually going to get the best score possible. So that was for the end enemies. I'm not going to do it again because it's so much RNG and it takes quite a while. What I'm going to do is I'm going to jump back in. And I'm going to show you guys the beginning of how to use this setup. So for the end enemies, you want to make sure his buffs are all gone. If you have the world ends with you medals, then you don't have to worry about waiting multiple turns. You can just activate that, activate your Kyrie, and then go ham. But obviously, you guys see the amount of RNG you need to get the best score possible. And you're definitely going to be in the top 5,000 with this. Now that I'm looking at it, you're definitely going to be able to make top 5,000. You just need a lot of RNG, which is pretty bad. But for the beginning enemies, let's go for something that's like this. He's level 50. What you guys want to do is make sure he stays alive, but you want to apply some buffs. So what you're going to do is fool around. Um, obviously, if I activate my Ariel here, he's, she's going to do a ton of damage. I can't activate my Kyrie here because Kyrie will do damage. And if I swipe, I'm done. If I activate this Kyrie, then he's dead. And I didn't get activate my Zaldan B. And because I didn't finish him off with Zaldan B, I'm at 78,000. Let's go back out and go back in. You guys want to repeat this over and over and over again until you see the perfect setup for each enemy. And then you do a full run. That's when you're, after you do your first full clear, then you start squeezing score out. Try to get your full clear out there first, get the RNG out of the way, and then do this full run. So back here at the same enemy, we know activating our first buffer there is a bad deal. So I'm going to swipe. I'm going to activate Kyrie here. And then activate the other Kyrie and see if that's enough. It's not enough. So again, 78,828. It's a little bit different, but that's going to happen with crits or certain buffs being activated. So let's go back in again. And try that without activating Kingdom Hearts 2 Kyrie and just activating our Kingdom Hearts 1 Kyrie. So, <laughs> a lot of Kyries, guys. So, swipe here, swipe here, swipe here. Activate this Kyrie. It doesn't kill him. And we get to activate Zaldan B for that one hit, which 78,000 was the previous score. Now I'm actually at 101,000. You see the difference here? Now, let's say that we didn't use any buffs on him. So 78,000, Let's go back in and try that again without a Kyrie buff. And let's see what kind of score we get off that. So again, first enemy, swipe, swipe, swipe. Let's just say you don't have enough SP, you didn't get the buff. This is how much of a score you're missing. So 78,000 was the original and 101,000. We lost 5,000 score off a small enemy. Now imagine how that equals up into the bigger enemies. So 78,000. If you just kill it with normal uh, metals, all your buff metals, 70, uh, 96,000 Zaldan B by himself, 101,000 Zaldan B with a buff. And of course, the more buffs, the better. Now let's see what Kingdom Hearts 2 carry does. So we did a times three strength buff. Let's do a times one PSM buff and a negative PSM debuff on the enemy. So same enemy here. We're not going to activate anything except for this carry here to restore gauges, lower his defense, raise our PSMF, PSMF, PSMM, and activate Zaldan B. So we had 78, 100,000. So we actually got a 1,000 more for using Kyrie, the times 3 strength buffer. But you guys can see there's not too much of a difference there. So if you have to fall in those situations, some sacrifices have to be made make them because sometimes it's better to use other ones in certain groups now let's quit this out and let's go into a group that has multiple enemies how do you guys deal with that so let's go back in there and let's look for a group of at least three people so i believe there's one up here or is this one too um you guys can see how much score this enemy gives and how many enemies there is see the little heartless symbol there right there it says one so let's look for a group that has three this group has two that group has one I believe there's one that has three somewhere, but these are the lower enemies. So let's go for one of the lower ones that has five. So let's just go for this group right here that has two. So for a group that has two, as you can see, one of them has a buff and that's really good. A defense buff. So when you actually want to damage is the guy with the defense buff. Now, again, you want to be able to squeeze up the most score possible. Let's lower my head again here so you can see some HP and some skills going off. So. He's not going to take any damage, but if I activate Kairi this turn and next turn, I'm going to lose out on my buffs, but also i got to realize my SP is not that high. So we activated one times Strengther. I'm going to do here Kairi 2, and then Kairi 1, 
on this guy right here because I knew he would survive. If I use Kyrie on the other one, it doesn't have a defense shield, he would actually die. Now I'm going to use my Zaldin here. My Zaldin is not going to take this guy out. I mean, it is going to take this guy out and leave that one alive. But if I swipe here, it's going to kill it. So, obviously, I can't activate that much buffs because the other guy dies. And if the other guy dies, you lose score there because you didn't activate Zaldin B on both of them. And you got to make sure you activate on both of them. I should have looked at the score, but let's just go back into that and do it the proper way. So, again, two enemies here. Activating the aerial for my situation is bad because it's AoE does damage to both of them. And you don't want to do that. But let's activate Kyrie once here and let's see what happens. If it kills it, then we'll figure it out. So Kyrie here with this and Zaldan B. So we have times three strength, a PSM, and we restore our gauges. So let's see if the swipe kills him. This time the swipe doesn't kill him, but he's barely alive. And we don't want him to die. Let's see what happens when we swipe. Swiping kills him. And that leaves him with a score of 426,000. And that's bad. Trust me, it's bad. Now let's go back in and let's try to survive that. So you guys want to keep doing this with every enemy possible to get the best score possible. So let's go back down there and let's try this again. So what are we going to do here? We know if we activate Aerial, it's going to kill them all and it's too much damage. If we activate our Kingdom Hearts 2 Kyrie here, it's going to do damage to both of them and we don't want that. So we're not going to do that. If our SP is full, our SP should be full going into this. It should be 19. But we're going to kill this enemy first here. And we're going to activate Zaldan B. So we have times 3 strength buffer and Zaldan B. And it's a take out 1. We're going to swipe here. And now we got lots of HP on this guy. So now what we can do is swipe here. We could activate this Kairi. But my Kairi does 3,000 or 6,000 damage. And that's going to kill it with the swipes. So we don't want to do that. But we want to make sure we have enough to activate Zaldan and everything. So let's just try it out anyways. As you guys can see, it has a little bit of HP there. If I swipe, it kills it. Again, the score is 408. So, that's bad. So, I'm going to go restore some SP. Or, you know what? Let me just grab some SP chest. And we do that properly. The reason there's an issue there is because of SP. So, there's certain groups you're not going to be able to activate your SP. And that's going to cause you an issue. I got to look for an SP chest. Because if I try to kill any enemies, that's going to increase the score. And we can't really judge it that way. So a chest right here, a chest right here, and that should be enough for that group there. So let's go back there and try that out again. So I think it was 408 or something like that for killing only one with Zaldin. So we're going to try that out again. Activate here, activate here, and only activate times 3 buffer. Boom, we got that going. Zaldin B, and then the plant's going to survive. So now we do have that 7 SP we needed. So enemy's going to hit us. We're going to swipe, swipe, swipe. Hopefully Kyrie doesn't kill him. Kyrie does kill him. So we can't do that either. Again, 408,000. Now, let's go back in there and try with L buffs. Or, what you guys can do is switch it up. Now, we know the other enemy has defense buff. So let's switch that and make it happen so that we actually keep the other dude alive. Because he's going to have a lot more HP after he we're done with them. So let's go back to that fight, and we're actually going to take down the flower first. So what we're going to do here is tap on this guy, tap on him again, and tap on him again. And now he's got a little bit of HP there. But he has a defense boost, so when we swipe with Cloud, he'll actually survive a little bit better. So what we're going to do here is activate Kairi on the flower. It doesn't kill it. And then we're going to activate Zaldan B on that flower. Here we're going to swipe, and you're going to see this guy has a lot more HP than the previous one. He does paralyze this, so it causes an issue, but what are you guys going to do? So swipe here, swipe here, swipe here. It skips Kyrie, but let me just activate this to show you. So 408,000, using Zelda to be on both of them, 419,000. But we want to see if we can activate Kyrie on that enemy as well. Now I'm just showing you this is what basically everyone does before they do a top score. Because once you do your full clear, you need to squeeze out points. And this is the whole point of this video. It's not really a full pilot, but at least I'm going to show you guys what you need to do to accomplish a full run of this. So let's go back to that and hopefully Paralyze doesn't screw us up again. What we could do if we really want to, let's go for, let's just go for the same strategy. We're going to tap on this guy three times. Actually, we don't need to tap on him three times because this guy survived with quite amount of HP. So 
we can actually just go full force on the flower here, tapping him instead of that one, and he'll have even more HP, and we could probably double buff with this guy. So, what I mean by that is swipe here. If I activate Kyrie here, it's gonna take out a big chunk, and activate this Kyrie, it's gonna take out more of a chunk. 9,000 damage. So there's 9,000 damage here, that's half an HP bar. So I gotta make sure when I use Kyrie, it's more than half. So let's try that out one more time. Um, this time, I'm not going to use those two chests there because I'm going to use Kyrie 2 just to test it out. Over and over, guys, you got to try different ways. You got to try different ways. So what I said here before is just tap on this guy because he's not going to die from this Kyrie here and your taps. He's going to have enough HP. So you're going to leave that uh, Bumblebee thing there with full HP after the swipe of this. So right there, he's got more HP than he did before. What we could do is activate this one, but that might be way too much. So I'm going to activate this Kyrie, hopefully the second one. And now it looks like he has 8,000 HP, so it's definitely going to kill him. So I know I can't activate Kingdom Hearts 2 Kyrie, so I'm going to try that again. Let's try that again without activating the Kingdom Hearts 2 Kyrie and see if we can pull a better score off that. Because I know the more buffs we get on both of them, the better. I can make this simple and just not use any of the Kyries and go in and just use that one or sorry, not any, but the Kingdom Hearts 2 Kyrie and use the Kingdom Hearts 1 Kyrie. And then we're totally fine. But I just want to experiment. So tap in on this guy all the way using the first Kyrie. And then Zelda B again. And this time, we're not going to use Kingdom Hearts 2 Kyrie on this one right here. So we're going to get paralyzed. So RNG evolves here, which is totally fine. The whole stage is RNG. So take out the RNG enemies first and then go for the full clear. So what I'm going to do here is hopefully I can activate both of these. So this is not going to kill them. And now we got to activate a time three buffer on both of them. That gives us a score of 438,000. So keep experimenting, guys. See what you can activate, see what you can't activate, and then go for it. Now, when it comes to three enemies, it's the same situation. I'm not going to show you exactly, but right here, guys, you want to be able to make sure all of them survive, but make sure buff as much as possible. Uh, why not? I'll show you for a three enemy as well since I have this video up. It's the whole point of this, right? To help you guys out. So what do you do for three enemies? Three enemies you can get away with better. Um, especially because they're a higher level, they can take more damage. So you definitely want to go for more buffs there. Definitely more buffs, but you want to make sure you use the most buffs possible for each enemy. So the first enemy is probably going to get the most buffs possible. Or if you're low on SP and you need to survive Kingdom Hearts 2 Kyrie, there are certain ways to do it. But let's just try this out. So if we activate the aerial here, um, your setup's probably totally different, but just try to activate as much buff as possible with each one and see if you can survive. So I got full rotation on the first one, and that worked out beautifully. Now if I swipe here, they're both going to take damage, and I don't want to do that. But a tap takes away a lot of damage there. So we are going to take down the guy at the lowest HP first. So what I'm going to do here is tap the guy with the bigger HP, activate aerial here, Activate Kingdom Hearts 2 Kyrie. And he still has some HP there. But is it enough? I think this would do way too much damage. Yeah, 7,000 is way too much damage. So I'm going to take it down. The guy at the lowest HP. Hopefully a swipe here does way too much damage. So we know we can't use Kingdom Hearts 2 Kyrie on one of those turns. So I'm only going to activate Kingdom Hearts 2 Kyrie once. And then go for it. Full blast on the other two. So one enemy is definitely going to get it, but the other two aren't. Or we'll see. We'll see how much I do. Let's try that out again. Let's go straight to those three. Now, when you do your full clear, just have this written down or memorize it, and you know what buffs you're going to activate during each fight. So first guy, this guy, I'm going to take out. He's going to get time six and a time six. I'm definitely going to have to use Kyrie here because of my SP. So that's when I'll judge when I'm going to use it. And then resolve it here. <coughs> So when I'm getting close to wasting my SP, that's when I'll use Kingdom Hearts 2 Kyrie. For now, I'm not going to. I'm just going to go with the simple again. So I'll tap on that guy, activate the first Kyrie. I believe that's a little bit more than 7,000, but I don't want to take my chances. So I'm going to tap here, does quite a bit of damage, and use Kingdom Hearts 1 Kyrie here. Okay, so I could have tapped him, and it would have been fine. So I know that if I don't succeed here. So now the issue here is that he's going to take quite a bit of damage. But I do activate, activate Kingdom Hearts 2 carry. So I'm going to swipe. Um, I could activate this, but it's going to be way too much damage. So swipe again. 
activate my carry and see if I can activate this carry. I can't, so I'll have to activate, well, here we go, hundreds, or sorry, 1,078,000. So, I gotta try that in a different way. And the best way probably to do it is not to activate the Kingdom Hearts 2 Kairi, but my SP is kind of low, so you gotta deal with that sometimes, so let's just try to figure out with low SP. So let me go into that again, and let's try that with trying to get all three of them to survive. Uh, what was it, 1,078,000? I think? I don't know, you guys can pause the video or rewind it. I just have shitty memory. So let's do that again. Full buffs on the first guy, except for the Kingdom Hearts 2 Kairi. Uh, definitely, I could activate it actually, but it might hinder my gameplay after, so let's just try it this way. So we're going to go like that, and keep these two with most HP possible, and then judge it by that afterwards. So one of them went to sleep, that's okay I guess. So the one with the lowest HP is the one I'm going to pick on right now, just to see if I can get all this in without killing him. Kairi's going to go off. And then the Kingdom Hearts 1 Kairi will. Doesn't kill him. And the other guy survives with quite a bit HP, which is good. So we're going to swipe here and see what we have left. We have about 17,000 HP, so we got to be really careful. So, again, I could activate this aerial, but I'm not going to. This Kairi and this Kairi shouldn't kill him. And then Zelda B will finish it off. So there you go. I figured out a way to do most buffs possible, and I got a score of 1,168,000. Now, you guys can see where if you don't activate your main damage dealer on all the enemies, you're missing big chunks, and it gets worse and worse the higher level the enemies become because they give more score. So, I went from 1,078,000 to an extra 90,000 score. So, keep mixing matching, guys, on each enemy and seeing how many buffs and buffs and debuffs you can do without killing the enemies and finishing off with your finisher. So, I'm not going to do the full run here because it's too much RNG, but make all this happen. Get your RNG on the last helicopters and fully complete this. If you want, finish off the small room first and then kill each enemy. And if even if you don't full complete it, you'll still get yourself a better score and then do a run like this. Once you figure out how much you got to buff and debuff on each enemy. So, I'm pretty sure this video was super long, but I just like to make these once in a while for newer players or players that don't know how to do this properly. Again, it's very different with a metal that does multiple hits. If it does multiple hits, your whole strategy changes. You're actually going to use less buffs instead of more buffs because the more hits land, the more score you get. Where Zelda B, it doesn't matter how much dam uh, how much HP the enemy has left as long as it's one hit lands. Same thing with Hercules of Phil, same thing with Marluxia A, Marluxia B, all those medals that do one hit, it doesn't matter how much HP they have, but other medals, you gotta make sure you take away some buffs sometimes, not all the times. Sometimes it's better to use less buffs. But just do what I did here with your single hit medals or two hit medals or three hit medals, maybe that might be too much, but that's what you guys wanna do to get the best score possible. So hopefully this helped you out. Let me know in the comment section. And as always guys, thank you so much for watching. Keep on smiling and I'll see you in the next one.